So the first part is basically a business overview of GoMT, and it's a pretty extensive section simply because we have way too many business lines. We kind of position ourselves as a travel super app, and the way I've structured this particular section is in the form of again a quiz and a poll, right? So we have you will see a bunch of questions coming up on your screens, uh, and then uh, you have to answer those. I hope you were able to go through the pre-reads. If not, nothing to worry. But we'll go through the process. Uh, like we'll look at good thing is we are a listed company, right? So pretty much all the financials, all the numbers are out there for everyone to see, right? So we'll we'll go through the some of the earnings report, look at some of the numbers. We'll drive the numbers from there only. You don't even have to go around asking people for what our key numbers are, right? And uh, and then at the end of it, if you have any questions about about some of the other sort of more deeper, if you want a more deeper dive, you want to understand some of the metrics a little better, happy to sort of uh, help you do that, right? So. So yeah, so let's see how well prepared you all are. Hopefully you got all the pre-read site. I had sent across a few earnings reports to the team to share those with you. Let's see if you, if you know some of the numbers that I'm going to throw at you. Cool. So we'll again do a poll and uh, yeah. So the first set of questions will come up now for you guys to answer. Let's see. We have three responses in. Guys, don't worry. Negative marking nahi hai. This is not CAT exam. Kuch bhi bhar do. If you don't know, I'm happy to address that. Uh, the way, like I said, the quiz is structured is it will give you a good overview of uh, what all the key numbers for the organization is. And it will give you a very good sense of what our business looks like. Yeah, but please take your time. There is no rush. Like we have enough time. Two more responses. Anyone's filling it? Great. Um, I'll just share the results now. Okay, it's on your screen. Nice. Clearly but that's good. Uh, which means that I have a lot more to talk about. <laughs> uh, so okay. So first we saw 23%. Uh 70% said we did 1.5 billion of we do typically do 1.5 billion GMV. Okay. Fine. So the most popular choice is 1.5 billion. In the second question, uh the most popular choice is $800 million. Okay, fine. Gross margin percentage, highest voted answer is 11%. Okay, interesting. And finally, highest voted answer for flights team gross margin is 7 to 9%. Awesome. Cool. Got it. So let's discuss these set of questions first uh, before we do the next set of questions. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's see. So we'll just switch between. So the first question was, what is the typical GMV we do in a year, right? And most of you answered, I think, uh, 1.5 or 1.6, right? Which was the first choice, right? So <clears throat> let's look at what we did. I have a few earnings support that you guys also saw it, right? So, <clears throat> so uh, 21. F by 22 is currently on, right? So what can you see here? Uh, can someone read it for me? What What is our gross bookings number? Let me just zoom it out. So this is, this is our last year fiscal report, right? So obviously in the fourth quarter, we published the full year results because that is when the year ends. 
right our gmv how do we uh, call out our gmv our gmv is basically the number of draws bookings we do right so let's say we sell a air ticket worth 10000 rupees so all of that basically counts towards draws bookings or our gmv so what does our gmv look like for the year 2021 can anyone speak it out for me from this like i have already like the earnings report is in front of you 1.6 billion dollars 1.6 billion dollars great right so fy21 was 1.6 billion dollars but you also know which is this number 1635.4 million right so 1.6 billion dollars but you also know that again last year was heavily hit due to covid right so obviously this is not what the typical sort of gmv number we do the year in which which was like pretty less impacted by covid was basically fy19 fy20 obviously was heavily impacted uh, right so we'll look at some of the older numbers <clears throat> uh if, sorry fy20 was also not too impacted by covid because it kind of came at the very end so fy19 what is the gross booking number here this is uh, this is 2019 so 1819 fiscal year what was the gross booking number what is the gross booking number here it is 5.4 billion dollars what did we do in fy20 Six. FY twenty. Even though the last few months were impacted a little bit because of COVID, because COVID had started kicking in sometime in March, uh, Feb, March sort of time frame. Our fiscal runs from April to March. So FY twenty fiscal is basically April nineteen to March twenty. So Feb, March twenty, there was some impact because of COVID, but that is the year where we kind of did our highest GMV, which is six point one billion dollars. So the answer to the first question was, we do. we did like actually this is not a typical gmv because every year we are also growing right so you could see that in fy19 we did uh, 5.6 5.4 uh, billion in fy20 we did 6.1 billion so 6.1 billion was the gmv that we did in fy20 obviously after that it's been significantly impacted due to covid this year uh, sorry last year we did uh, whatever 1.6 billion dollars so the right answer is 6.1 billion dollars and not 1.6 1.6 is way too low a number and the reason right so if you had to basically contextualize this number how would you think about it right is 6.1 billion dollars is a big big number small number how do you think about it right if if i had to sort of ask you that uh, in terms of gmv how big make my trip is like how would you think about this question right you have to obviously baseline it with some number right do you know what is flipkart gmv for for one year annually how much gmv does flipkart do any idea anyone You can Google it and tell me. It's around twenty-three billion. So I think Flipkart does about twenty plus billion dollars. The last time I looked, right? So you can see that even though we are only a travel-first marketplace, we are not a horizontal e-commerce marketplace. We still do significant GMV. We are pretty big. We are doing pre pretty much like almost twenty-five percent of Flipkart's GMV, right? So. that self tells you that how big and how dominant we are in travel space in india right so that's the first question <clears throat> the second question was obviously what was the impact of covid right so that you have already seen uh because of covid obviously our revenue uh, sort of our gmv actually came down significantly so we could only do, do 1.6 billion dollars so that was the second question uh the third question was what is our uh gross margin percentage for the entire group right across all lines of businesses so uh, i think most of you if i remember correctly what was the answer uh, most of you uh, said uh, 1.5 ha so yeah so 46% of you marked 11% how did you arrive at that number can someone sort of walk me through the logic like how did you get the 11% number Uh, so i just thought what will be the commissions you would be gaining for a ticket or a, a hotel booking yeah so correct correct absolutely thought maybe so but how how did you guys arrive at the 11% number like where did you get it from the earnings report like it's i i remember it's like 25% around like for hotels and uh, it is around 7% for uh, flights and another section is also 20% so if you do an average 
I would say it's around 15% something. Got it. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's what I So do. let me do some mathematics for you, right? From the earnings report. Right. And it's pretty straightforward, right? There's like, I hope uh, like you guys understand how to read the earnings report, right? So you see your GMV was $1.6 billion, right? And if your revenue was $163 million, right? So what is your gross margin percentage? Because revenue is your top line, right? So if you sold tickets worth $1.6 billion, so you sold roughly around 1630 million and you made 163 million uh, as your top line revenue, your gross margin percentage is effectively 10%. Right. Uh, this helps, right? So this is, this is how you read the earnings report, right? So 1635.4 million. So 163 million divided by 1630 million, right? Which is about 10%. So 10% is roughly your gross margin. And the reason why I arrived at the 11% number is because there's a small trick here, right? The way we look at IFRS revenue, and I, I hope you understand what IFRS is. It's the international financial reporting standards, right? So the way we report our IFRS revenue is basically we make certain revenue and from that we basically subtract all the discounting and cashbacks that we have given to the customer, right? So that is how we report our IFRS revenue, which, which gives me a 10% number, right? 163 divided by 1635. But actually, if you look at it, we report another interesting number called adjusted margin. And adjust, adjusted margin is basically effectively our take rate. Take rate is basically if I sell a ticket worth 10,000 rupees, how much money I make it without netting it for cashbacks and discounts, right? So if you look at it, our adjust, adjusted margin for air ticketing was $38 million, but in $38 million, but in terms of revenue, we reported only $24 million, which means $14 million we are given passed on to customers as cashbacks and discounts from our own pocket. So our actual margin, if we had to derive the actual margin, we should do it basis adjusted margin and not from revenue number. Revenue number basically does not tell you that how much cashback discount we chose to pass on to the customer. That is not truly my gross margin. The gross margin is effectively how much, how much commission, how much money I'm getting from my supplier, be it from my hotelier or be it from my, uh, flight partner, etc. Right? So actually the maths needs to be done on adjusted margin. Is it clear? So if you do the maths on adjusted margin, so here is a table down below. Right. So if you were to do the math on adjusted margin, you have about 32, 38.2 million dollars from air ticketing. This is 2021, which is uh, like December 2021. Sorry, but three months ended March 31, 2021. So 38.2 million dollars. So let's start putting these numbers. So we made 38.2 million dollars the from air ticketing. We made uh 35.5 million dollars from hotels and packages. I'm just putting down those numbers 35.5 from hotels and packages. Then we had uh, 10.9 million dollars from bus. Sorry, this is wrong. And then $5.1 million from other business units, right? So 5.1 from other business units. If I add all of this up, I made some mistake. <clears throat> ha, correct. So this is fine. And so this is for only for that quarter. And this is our gross booking number for that particular quarter, which is $759 million. Right. So in final quarter, we did GMV of $759 million and we made adjusted margin of $89 million. Right. So what does our gross margin look like? Roughly around 11.8%, 11 to 12%. Right. So that's the range. That is the number that we are looking at. So our gross margin is actually based on our adjusted margin and not really uh, in terms of the actual revenue numbers that we report to the street. Right. Because by reporting to the street, we actually account for cashbacks and discounts, which we could have held right. We could have kept with ourselves just that we want to grow faster than the market. So we are obviously passing on those sort of, uh, passing on those cashbacks and discounts to our customers, but our actual gross margin is close to 12%, 11.8%. Is this clear? Does this help? Yeah, just wanted to ask. 
one thing anurag that mm-hmm. our cashbacks and discounts the only thing we look for adjusted margin like or is there any other section we do yeah so good question so what happens is uh, the way you look at the income statement for go md right uh, what happens is obviously you are selling tickets you are making some take rates and from those take rates what is happening is the way the financial reporting works today is uh, you you made 38 million dollars in case of flights but what happened it is you passed on 14 million dollars of discounts to the customers so you reported street revenue of only 24 million dollars but that's truly not your gross margin right so you actually made 38 million dollars right after that obviously the other line items come in right so you have other costs that are coming in but at a at a top line level 38 million dollars is your absolute top line no expense is being like reduced from this this basically uh you sold so much uh, of, of fly, flight and hotel bookings and bus bookings and train bookings and what not and this is the actual absolute top line number that you made other expenses will then start coming later the only problem is uh, the way i of ifrs standards work they make you report your top line by subtracting the cashbacks and discounts right so that's the only thing rest everything starts coming into the rest of the income statement items right so which is why the top line number the only thing that needs to be added back is basically the cashbacks and discounts and which is which is why we report this adjusted na- margin number every quarter every quarter you will see every earnings report you will see that we always report a adjusted margin number we report a revenue number and then we report a adjusted margin number and in fact in every earnings report you will also see what we call as a management discussion analysis right every earnings report has an mda management discussion analysis uh every report has something called why we feel that adjusted sorry i'll have to look it up let me see if what's the best way <laughs> so obviously uh, this nice table that we already looked at everywhere you will see in the earnings report we talk about this adjusted margin number and somewhere we uh, we talk about every there is a standard sort of text in every earnings report which talks about why adjusted margin is the right metric to look at uh, so it is it would be somewhere it's a fairly long report so obviously i don't remember exactly where it is but every report has that so let me just try and see anyways i i look it up and uh, show it to you but basically every report has some standard text which talks about why adjusted margin is the right way of looking at our business So, for example, here here is that line, right? So, customer inducement cost added back to adjusted margin is intended to reflect the way we view our ongoing business under IFRS. These customer inducement costs are reco- required to be recorded as a reduction of revenue, which is why we say that our actual revenue is thirty eight million dollars, and only because of the way IFRS wants us to report it, we basically report it as a reduction of revenue. Again, see here also. For example, bus ticketing also again same line is there. under ifrs these customer inducement costs are required to be recorded as a reduction of revenue which is why we look at it that way does that help yes it does cool so yeah so the last question is basically flights gross margin right so flights gross margin like i said it's pretty straight forward again look at flights adjusted margin so again go, going back to the first thing flights adjusted margin which is 38.2 million right and then obviously you have to look at the flights gmv which is not here but it was there somewhere uh, so let's look at <clears throat> so something similar we will do for air ticketing so somewhere there is a flights gmv number and then you obviously have the adjusted margin number so that numerator becomes adjusted margin which is 38 million dollars and your denominator will be uh, gmv for flights right so you divide the uh, adjusted margin number divided by the gmv for flights and you get the adjusted margin number for air ticketing which is somewhere in the range of 7 to 9 percent so just to sort of give you a more sort of holistic picture of what it looks like so we also publish a very nice investor deck so you don't have to derive these numbers every single time 
while all these numbers are basically somewhere hidden in our earnings report you can always look at the report calculate those numbers but we also have a very nice investor deck that we publish pretty much every every 3 months right so here here is how it looks like right so for example in fy20 we did 249 million dollars of air ticketing gmv and our adjusted margin percentage was 7% right similarly you we also have a quarterly view here so you can see that 38.6 million dollars is what we did like this, this is the number we looked at right and in quarter 2 fy22 our adjusted margin percentage was 8.6% right so it kind of ranges between 7 to 9% sometime obviously 10.7% in uh, q1 fy22 but typically it ranges between 7 to 9% so 7 to 9% is the right sort of gross margin range for air ticketing for hotels and packages again you can look at it it is somewhere close to 20. anything between 18 to 20% so for hotels and packages your adjusted margin number is basically 18 to 20% bus ticketing again 8 and a half percent close to 8 and a half percent and obviously others others is basically ancillary revenue so you are running ads you are basically doing some other stuff there there is no cost of goods sold right so there is no take rate concept this is money you are making uh, whatever money you are making is effectively directly going to your bottom line so there is no concept of adjusted margin in case of others right so these could be any kind of ancillary revenue you might be doing some partnership with someone right so that guy might be passing on uh, some revenue to us directly right we might be running ads on our platform right so all of those guys directly whatever is the top line is also the bottom line there is no uh, sorry the, whatever is the top line is basically the revenue what is the whatever is the gmv number is the revenue number also right so 4.4 million dollars is effectively the net revenue number because there is no sort of you are not really selling anything right you are directly whatever money you are making it, it is directly coming to your income statement right so that is how it works theek okay? hai so far so good understood what are margins are for each of our respective businesses is this clear now any questions comments okay i hope you guys are already not sleeping i can't see you because i'm sharing my screen so uh, so we can move on to the next set of questions isha ishani if you can help with the next set of questions i'll stop sharing yes i'll just launch the second it's on your screen now you will be able to see the first question you should be able to answer now because i have already shown you the number we have four responses in only three more to go if anyone is wrapping up great um, i'll share the results thank you Okay, it would be on your screen now. My God, Janta, pakka so rahi hai. Oh my God, I just showed you the numbers. पहले वाले के भी गलत आंसर. So <laughs> very interesting. So uh, the first question says, what is the gross margin percentage for hotels and packages? This is specifically hotels and packages, right? What did I show you just now? What is the gross margin percentage for hotels and packages? Like twenty percent of you have said the gross margin percentage for hotels and packages between seven to nine percent, which is obviously wrong. That is the gross margin percentage for flights, not hotels and packages. I'll, I'll obviously show you the deck again. Uh, about thirty-one percent said ten to fifteen percent. That is also wrong. Fifteen between fifteen to twenty percent is the right answer, which is like forty percent of the respondents, right? How many business units do we have? Uh, interesting one. So we'll go through it. I think. Uh, this one is a little uh, 
complicated to answer it it can be one of the many answers depending on how the way you look at it how much is year of our total business in revenue terms interesting so 46% of you said it is only 24% of our business in revenue terms which is pretty interesting uh so most of you guys think that uh, air air actually gives us less business it only gives 24% of our business a lot of you guys think 47% of you think that 54% of our revenue is coming from hotels and packages so good so i think i'm quite happy with the results of this poll so let's let's discuss all of these right so let's move back to let's move back to the deck so this is the deck i showed you just now right so what is the uh, what is the adjusted margin percentage for hotels and packages can someone read it out for me for quarter 2 fy 22 18 to 20 18.4 percent right so the margin for hotels and packages business the gross margin for hotels and packages business is close to 20 percent 18 to 20 percent Yes. Right. And not 7%. The 7% number is actually the flights number, right? So this is the flights number, right? Seven to nine. So between seven to 9% is the air ticketing margin between 18 to 20% is the hotels and packages business margin. This is expected, right? Because air is a very commoditized kind of product, right? We are not doing any fancy stuff on air supply, right? The airline, the, the airlines give us the supply. We just basically sell it. We are not able to do any fancy stuff there. Right. So whatever take rates, we agree with the airlines. That is what we get. But in hotels and packages, we have a lot more room uh, simply because uh, they are not corporate structures, right? Yes, there are some chain hotels, right? But most of them are independent hotels, right? So we have a lot more negotiation power, lot more room to negotiate, right? And it is not as competitive as flights, right? So uh, hotels are also able to price it very differently and hence because we are able to negotiate much more strongly with them because we are a very strong entity in hotels and packages space. We actually aggregate most of the uh, Indian hotels and packages supply, right? We are able to get far better commissions there than we would ever be able to get on air ticketing business. And which is why, and then obviously in bus also very similar to air ticketing margin. So you are playing between like seven to 9% range. And which is why you overall, overall gross margin, margin percentage is going up to 11%, right? Because Hotels and packages is able to uh, like push this average number up from seven to nine percent range to an eleven percent range, and that is happening because hotels and packages have very good margin. Does that help? Is it clear? Okay. So next question was uh, our next question was. Uh, how many business units do we have, right? So this is a fairly controversial one. It's not an easy one to answer. I just wanted to put it out there just to give you a sense of how much, how, like how big we have become, right? From the, in fact, from the last time I was around here when I was working here and then I obviously moved out and came back, uh, we have launched so many new business units so much so that not probably even people within the company don't know how many business units do we have. But we have this aspiration or we have this vision. We want to become a travel super app and we just, we keep adding new and new business units. So I'll just give you a flavor of all the different business units. I have actually listed them down for you, right? So obviously we have flights that you are aware of. We have hotels, uh, that you are aware of. We also offer, we have a big ground transport business unit now, which has trains, bus and cabs, right? And, uh, so trains, bus and cabs, then obviously we have holidays, right? And then with holidays, because we offer international holidays and all, we also have visa, right? And actually we also have activities. So visa and activities kind of, kind of fall under the holidays umbrella. Uh, then we have gift cards. Uh, then we have a FinTech arm. In fact, uh, just today, a new sort of, uh, new news came out in the media where we are looking to sort of scale our FinTech arm even more. So we have something called trip money is basically offering loan, loan products, insurance products, credit products to uh, travel customers. Then we have started making a foray into B2B space also, right? So early on, MakeMart was only in consumer travel space, uh, but there are a lot of incumbents in uh, business travel key, uh, uh, space also. Uh, so think of the travel desk at your company, right? So that's like the B2B offering uh, uh, 
uh, B2B offering from a lot of companies, right? So we were not there in B2B space uh, for a long period of time, but now we have made a foray into B2B space. And within B2B, we actually have two sort of products. We have something called MyBiz and we have something called Quest to Travel, which basically cater to different sizes of organizations. So MyBiz is basically something focused on smaller sort of, you can think of them as SME, MSME companies, right? Which have like probably between like 15 to 50 employees or hundred employees, whereas Quest to Travel is more sort of, is, an, uh, is a B2B offering catering to uh, the more sort of corporate kind of customers, right? So the Tata's and Goldridge's of the world, right? Then we have made a foray into Gulf space and that is an independent business unit because obviously Gulf countries, right? So the Middle East countries, we are now offering uh, travel products to the Middle East countries as well. And this is a separate business unit simply because there are a lot of nuances for the Middle East countries, right? So obviously language is one big nuance, right? So language is obviously something the currency support, the payment modes, everything is slightly different from what we offer in India. So we have a separate business unit that caters to the uh, Gulf countries. Uh, DCC stands for Gulf Cooperation Council. Then we have something called My Partner, which is basically a product catering to agents, right? So we offer a white label product to our agents to make travel booking sites. Right? So this is basically trying to capture the offline part of the travel market. So we offer a booking panel to agents sitting in, let's say, Indore, Jhansi, Hyderabad, Lucknow, right? Where they can use the make matter panel to basically make travel bookings for their customers. And we basically get some kind of commission percentage from that. Uh, activities we have already discussed, which basically rolls up under uh, holidays. We have, we are now focusing uh, specifically on alternate accommodation. What we call is alternate accommodation, which is basically homestays and villas, because obviously because of COVID, a lot of travel sort of trends are, are changing and a, a lot of customers are actually preferring now staying in homestays and villas. So homestays and villas or alternate accommodations actually a separate business unit in itself right now. And we also have Metro, even though most of the metros are not operating right now, but we do also offer Metro ticketing for Hyderabad Metro and we had plans to do Mumbai Metro as well. Right. So how many of these are there? So you have three, three, six to eight. And then you have five more 13 and then three sixteen, And then if you split flights itself into domestic and international flights and hotels also into domestic and international hotels, because the behave very differently, right? International hotel supply is very different from domestic hotel supply, right? Getting international hotels on board is very different from domestic hotels on board. So technically, if you split these two, you are adding two more business units more, right? So effectively you have 18 business lines operating within make matter alone. And this is probably only going to, I don't know, maybe expand in future, right? So for example, I have not split cabs also, but it's still a very uh, sort of upcoming business line, but cabs itself might get split into airport cabs and intercity cabs and whatnot, right? So anything you're looking at, anything between like 16 to 18, 19 sort of business units at make my trip alone, right? And all of these obviously require product managers, which is why we go to campuses every year and hire uh, the smartest of you, right? So that's the answer to the second question. So my answer would be anything between like 16 or 18 is probably the right answer. <clears throat> so most of you, I think got this one also wrong because I think obviously you didn't know a few of these business units, especially the B2B and the MyBiz ones. Any questions on this? Do you want more clarity on what each of these business lines are or was I able to explain most of it? Yeah, just one second. You just meant, can you just tell me about the quest to travel? Uh, yeah. So quest to travel is basically a Mumbai based company that we acquired recently, right? So we probably acquired them maybe a year, year and a half back, right? Or maybe more if I might be a little sort of wrong about the timelines. And uh, so my biz is a homegrown offering. So we went, when, when make matter went into, uh, went into B2B uh, travel space. Right. They identified that the small and medium enterprises is probably a wide space. Those are the, those are the companies that are not served. Those are the organizations that are not served well by, uh, by players today in the B2B space. Right. So when make matter built out its own sort of B2B offering, they did my biz, right. But, <clears throat> but at some point of time, they realized that maybe it helps to also sort of, if you want to basically get a bigger footprint in uh, B2B space. It, it is probably better to also sort of look at inorganic growth, right? And they went out and basically acquired this company called Quest to Travel. So Quest to Travel is like any traditional sort of B2B uh, travel company, which offers like travel bookings, right? So obviously 
if you if you, you all of most of you have worked at organizations in the past so obviously there's an internal travel desk right where you go you can book right there are a lot of companies in that space for example amex is a very large player in that space right so quest to travel is something similar so you think of quest to travel is a uh, as like similar to amex but obviously a much smaller player than amex right and they offer like traditional sort of uh, travel booking panels and obviously uh, service support to large corporates right so some of like i said right we have we have the likes of tata godrej etc so we keep closing new and new customers and new and new accounts uh, so we have fair bit of large accounts uh, when it comes to quest to travel whereas my business my business very very focused on small and medium companies does that help yeah yeah thank you sure just give me a second i'm getting some pings yeah cool so that was the second one uh third one uh, interestingly um, a lot of you got it right uh, i was actually surprised i was expecting most of you to actually uh, go wrong on this one but you are uh, actually so what am i looking at so you are saying 24% uh 24% of you are saying nay nee, sorry 46% of you said that 24% of our business in revenue terms comes from air so you are actually correct so yes so air has become a much smaller percentage of our revenue though again there is a small trick here we'll talk about that so let's go back to the deck uh, that i showed you or rather the earning support so you are correct right so if you look at this number right <clears throat> so we know that revenue was 79 million dollars for 4q21 right so again go back to the excel Let me just shift this so 79 million dollars was our total revenue right and <clears throat> air ticketing was 24 out of 79 right so 24.2 million dollars <clears throat> so how much is 24 by 79 roughly around 30% right which is like so obviously this number is changing from quarter to quarter uh, the number that i gave you was probably for a much longer time range so you can see that this is definitely much smaller than like air is definitely not our dominant business unit right in terms of revenue right out of 79 million dollars like it is very clear from our uh, this quarter earnings report that we made only 24 million dollars out of 79 million dollars when it, in terms of revenue right uh, and which is like close to 30% so you most of you are correct when you say that um, this is somewhere around 24 25% this is actually true in revenue terms this is true however the same thing happens here as well <clears throat> if you look at it from a adjusted margin perspective right so adjusted margin was 38 million dollars in case of air ticketing right whereas in in terms of uh, for hotels and packages adjusted revenue so here here is what is happening right uh, <clears throat> in case of air ticketing your revenue reported to the street is 24 million dollars but obviously you did a lot of cashbacks and discounts which is why uh, your actual adjusted margin was 38 million dollars in hotels and packages if you look at it uh, <clears throat> your actual adjusted margin uh after doing the cashbacks and discount discounting thing is only 35 million dollars so it is actually less than air right if for this specific quarter there are some nuances in this specific quarter so in revenue terms because air ticketing is way more competitive as a market right there are a lot of players in the market so we are forced to do a lot more cashback and discounting in air ticketing versus hotels and packages right so hotels and packages mein what is happening is we are doing far less discounting because we are like the by far the dominant player there are not a whole lot of uh, hotel ticketing players in india who are like really really competing well with us right so the market landscape is much much sort of uh, saner out there so in terms of actual revenue because we are forced to do a lot of discounting our actual air ticketing revenue uh, shrinks a lot because we pass on a lot of cashbacks and discounts so in terms of revenue percentage we are like closer to like anything between 25 to 30% right but when you look at it from a adjusted margin perspective right which is like what would we, what what would we would have made 
if we were not forced to pass all these cashbacks and discounts there again air is probably as sizable as hotels and packages right almost like a, a like pretty much the same split right so so that is where it is right so from a adjust from a revenue perspective it will look less but from an adjusted margin perspective which is again a two representation of our business air is still very very sizable so we'll go back to the deck the master deck that we were looking at right so this is exactly what i'm saying right so 38 million dollars from air ticketing in terms of adjusted margin 35 million dollars from hotels and packages 7.9 million dollars from bus ticketing and 4.4 million dollars from uh, others right so if we just add these up so let's just add these so from a revenue perspective you saw this number was only 30 percent but if you add it from an adjusted margin perspective so 38 35 uh you have 7.9 and you have 4.4 7.9 and 4.4 and if i add all of these up right and now i take airs percentage as a percentage of our adjusted margin it is close to 45 percent right so air so we if we wanted to we can make a lot of revenue in air just that because air is so competitive we are we are being forced to pass a lot of cashbacks and discounts to our customers which is why from a revenue perspective, from an IFRS revenue perspective, we are making only 30% revenue, but it is as sizable as hotels and packages even today, even though hotels and packages have grown significantly, but air is still very big and air still contributes a fair share of our revenues. And actually adjusted margin is the real view of our revenue uh, split, right? So air is, is probably at the same, air is actually at pretty much still today at the same level as hotels and packages. Is that clear? Does that help? I had a quiet there. Sure. So uh, in the IFRS report, it's that in the hotels, the adjusted margin is less than the revenue. Yes. How yes, is it yes. So? I think what happened here, this is specifically, this is not true in all earnings report, but I think that's a great catch. I think what happened here is uh, there must have been something, right? So what happens sometimes is because this is bundled, right? Hotels and packages actually means both our hotels business as well as our holidays business. Sometimes what happens is you are, a, you are forced to do some kind of write downs because in packaging, what happens, you actually have to pre buy a lot of inventory, right? And then you basically package it up, right? So you basically pre buy a lot of inventory from flights, uh, from air suppliers, from hotel suppliers, right? And sometimes you're forced to, uh, basically, so technically you made significant amount of revenue, but you took some write downs on whatever supply you had to pre buy because you were not able to sell it right so which is why adjusted margin actually became less than revenue so that's that's like a uh that's like unique for this particular uh, quarterly earnings report this is not in general this is not true in general your adjusted margin will always be typically be higher than the revenue that you see in a particular quarter but great question does that help that yeah yeah got it got it okay understood so yeah even i was surprised right so i did not notice this specific metric right now only now i noticed that for this particular quarter the adjusted margin was actually less than revenue but that typically does not happen that's not typically the case if you look at other earnings support that will not happen cool uh <clears throat> i think this this is specifically to do with the fact that this again the covid year right so covid year a lot of uh weird things have happened so this is like one of them great question again great observation uh good so what was the final thing that we wanted to discuss yeah so uh, you guys are correct uh in fact let me look at my sheet if i do the same maths <clears throat> and i think i must have done it for a longer time frame oh yeah so actually if i look at the hotels while i split the hotels is actually close to in terms of revenue it is close to 60 percent so i i would have done it for a different year for a longer time frame so about 24% was coming as air revenue and almost like 58, 60% was coming at as hotels revenue. But again, like I said, uh, this is only from a revenue perspective, from an adjusted, adjusted margin perspective, the hotels business is very similar to the air business even today. And at some point of time, it is obviously hotels business because of the uh, much superior margin structure and et cetera will, and there is a lot more headroom in hotels, right? Because still far less people book hotels online compared to air. So this number will continue to grow and at some point of time hotels it is already the biggest law uh, uh, even in terms of adjusted margin but it will like 
in near future it will actually overtake air by a significant percentage right uh, but like i said revenue terms it looks much more the 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 the, the difference looks much more sizable 58% versus 24% but in actual adjusted margin terms that difference is still very much matching it's not uh, like those numbers are still very close right so the answer to the fourth question was basically close to 60% in terms of revenue terms but like i said in terms of adjusted margin terms it will be close to 50 uh, like 45 55 so that is how it will be cool so we can do the next set of questions then i think hopefully this part was clear so far at any point of time you guys are getting bored please let me know i will uh, maybe move on to the something more fun so like it's not like it's one way but yeah third quiz would be on your screen now i think it has three questions we have eight responses one more to go great uh, thank you so much i will just share the results Okay, the results would be on your screen now. Okay, so these questions are more qualitative. So I see that interesting. So a lot of you still feel that desktop website gives us a lot of traffic. Okay. Uh, I would like to hear why some of you mark desktop as the answer. I'm not saying it is right or wrong. I just wanted to understand from you guys. Like, what is your thinking? I think that's pretty interesting to hear from you guys. Whosoever mark desktop as the answer, just want to hear your thoughts. If anyone is willing to volunteer, I have marked Anurag as yeah. Well, so I have marked Android, but I think whoever has marked desktop, perhaps. large scale like travel agents might use your platform so they they might use but i have marked android because i think wow. person uses it got it uh, anyone from the desktop bucket wants to volunteer like i want to hear from you nothing is right or wrong we are just discussing debating so would like to hear why someone marked desktop yeah no like i marked desktop because first i thought about the booking agencies they generally when they book in cafes or something like that they generally use desktops other uh, reason was that flight is something which is like costly compared to other products and people want to compare more and so they generally go and look for more things on laptop and research more so that good good thinking good thinking i think i was expecting something like this so good uh, so the right answer is android app i think uh, what has happened in india for sure post 2014 15 is that a lot more people have mobile devices compared to desktops and laptops right so just the sheer number of devices right if you look at the number of internet users in india people claim anything between like 5 million to 600 million users you would expect most of them are coming from phones right not a whole lot of these users actually have access to desktop and laptop and the second thing that has happened is uh, we now that we have launched ground transport right so we have trains bus cabs right so the average ticket size is also become smaller right so a typical flight would be Five thousand bucks, six thousand bucks, seven thousand bucks, right? But a typical train ticket or a bus ticket would only be thousand rupees, right? Which is why you would see that a lot of your traffic is actually coming from mobile devices. I, in fact, a fair few mark mobile website also, which is also like a good, interesting answer. So we get most of our traffic on mobile devices, which kind of reflects the internet ecosystem and and. Uh, most of it comes on the android app because obviously we have the most dominant uh, android ecosystem is android so obviously we get uh, most of our traffic on android apps 
but desktop also is not too far behind right and uh, in terms of traffic android might still be much much bigger than desktop but in terms of transactions desktop definitely has far better uh, rates of conversion right so people are actually able to more seamlessly book things on desktop right than they are able to book on let's say a smaller device right phone device which is why in terms of orders desktop is still very very sizable but the right answer is android app okay this is another interesting one and i think i i tricked all of you by putting this question who is the biggest investor in goemt group what's the right answer so most of you have marked tiger global i would like to hear why you marked it i think this is a good one because you read some uh, news reports uh the uh, i have answered next first but i think tiger global they have been investing in uh, many tech based startups in the year 2020 got it got it good thinking sai pretty smart thinking uh good one actually the reasoning is pretty solid but unfortunately the answer is wrong actually the answer is kind of like uh, i I'll, i'll disclose more anyone else who marked nas naspers i think naspers is also pretty interesting answer who marked naspers i want to hear from you anyone who say we mark naspers guys am i already boring you so much that you guys have already gone to sleep i think i thought i put together a good set of questions for you guys come on who mark naspers someone volunteer tell me why you mark mark naspers i think that's also a very legit answer if someone is thinking naspers is probably uh, is probably a good answer to think about and there's obviously some solid reason behind it but i would like to hear from you someone anyone who wants to volunteer i actually answered naspers but i uh, i mean i looked at it at the google so god okay cool so let me quickly answer this so tiger global actually if you look at our set of investors the first initially the company that actually backed us was tiger global right tiger and tiger is is like a like sai already pointed out it's a very sort of uh active investor in indian internet ecosystem right they were the biggest investors behind flipkart as well in case you don't know right they were they were like the biggest backers behind flipkart right so sachin and bini had a lot of uh backing from tiger global but at some point of time the relationship soured and uh, they were moved out so tiger actually was the first backer for goemt also back in way back when we started right so this is early 2000s right so they actually kind of bet on goemt but at some point of time they exited out of the company they sold all all their stake during the ipo and when other investors came on board naspers is again also a good answer because when make matter acquired goibib right so goibib earlier was not part of make matter so make matter actually bought goibib and then we became goemmt right which is why we today we call ourselves goemmt the make matter group and naspers was the biggest investor in goibib and hence when the merger happened uh naspers had a fair bit of uh, like naspers obviously became one of the biggest investors in the goemt group also but recently they also sort of uh, they, they felt that travel they don't want to focus on travel as a vertical and so they sold uh, their uh, their stake to one of the other large investors that we have right and most of you said in fact the the option that has gotten the least votes ctrip is the right answer so ctrip is actually our biggest investor uh ctrip uh, they they are a very big uh, they they are like if think if you think of ctrip ctrip is like make matter of china in fact we should we tell it the other way we say make matter is ctrip of india right because ctrip is a very very big company it's a company with 20 plus billion dollar market cap right so it is as big as flipkart in india right so it's a very big company uh, it does a, it, ha- it has massive scale obviously because china is a far larger company uh, a far larger country than us right and obviously the purchasing power is also much higher so ctrip is actually our biggest investor they bought out when naspers sold their stake it actually ctrip actually bought it because they are a strategic investor in make matter because they feel they are a travel company and if they buy stakes in a travel company obviously a uh, lot of learnings and because india is a growing market so that can give them a uh, good sort of returns right which is why they came in now what what does this tell you <laughs> this effectively tells you that effectively if you look at our investor share holding right we are actually a chinese company right ctrip is a chinese company and they own close to 50% of make matter so don't tell this to others but theoretically we are a chinese company in some sense right in terms of investor holding right so that is what it is 
and the final question was is go empty group profitable yes at least the last two quarters we have been profitable again if you look at our earnings report it will tell you a loss in terms of IF, ifrs accounting statement but that is simply because obviously you understand in an income statement there are a lot of non cash stuff also right so you have depreciation and amortization you have impairment of goodwill you have share based compensation what not right so which is why in the official sort of earnings report you will see us as uh, non profitable but if you look at it at a uh, at a operating adjusted operating what we call as adjusted operating profit you will find us profitable uh, so again similar to how we talk about adjusted margin we also talk about adjusted operating profit and if you look at adjusted operating profit i'll just quickly uh, share my screen again and just show you this deck master deck uh, so if you look at adjusted operating profit so q2 fy22 we were positive right so you these are the numbers right so, so we made a profit of 6.6 .6 million dollars in quarter 2 fy22 quarter 3 fy22 is not here in this particular deck but in quarter 3 fy22 again we made an adjusted operating profit of i think 15 million 13 to 15 million dollars is what we made right so we have been profitable couple of these quarters and we were profitable in fy21 when things were going good uh before uh, the second wave came in but prior to that if you look at it consistently non profitable but again like i said that has simply to do with the fact that we want to grow very fast and we are investing in growth we are spending a lot of money resources throwing a lot of discounts at the customer to basically grow as fast as possible but if we want it to be profitable like you can see if we want to be profitable any quarter we want to be profitable we pull back our spends and we are able to get to operating profit asap so it's not a big problem in fact make my trip if i had to just put it up make my trip is one of the very few internet companies in india that is actually profitable one of those very rare customer b2c companies b2c internet companies that is actually profitable flipkart is still not profitable zomato is still not profitable even though it has listed ptm is still not profitable make my trip is one of those very few companies in india that is actually profitable in the internet ecosystem Cool. So I'll stop here and I think we have some last set of questions, one more, and then we'll quickly move on to the next section. Uh, Anurag, those questions were on chat. So. Ah, correct, correct. So I think we will stop here. Uh, uh, we had a few more questions, but I think given that uh, we have already spent a fair bit of time on the business overview, I think we can stop here. But hopefully this section gave you a good overview of what our business looks like, what our margins look like in each of those individual businesses. Any questions, comments, I'm happy to take them right away. Or we can move on to the next section. Lord, I have... So can you share some details about uh, the number of users for our desktop website and the application? How many retail users and how many uh, B2B users? Yeah, so I think... Uh, uh, yeah, so in terms of traffic split, like I said, uh, you can almost think I, I don't have the numbers really top of my mind right now, but I can tell you that uh, almost you can think of it almost like a 70 30 split, maybe even more, where like 70% of the traffic would be coming from mobile devices and 30% of the traffic would be on desktop. And within mobile, also, uh, your mobile website actually gets a lot of tra tra traffic simply because a lot of people start the journey from Google search, right? A user can only start his journey from the app he, if he actually has the app installed, right? And people generally uh, search far more on Google search than they go and actually search on Play Store that I want a travel app, right? So just because of the search behavior of user, you see a lot of traffic on mobile website also, right? So mobile website pretty much competes as a unit competes well with the apps in terms of traffic, right? But what actually happens is because this is regular search, so uh, you're basically getting traffic from search engines, a lot of it does not convert that well uh, compared to the apps, right? So because app, you see the user has much higher intent, right? Because he's actually taken the pain of actually installing the app on his device, or maybe he's already a regular user of the app, right? Which means if he launches an app and actually does something, he is, his chances of buying a ticket is much, much higher than someone who is just doing a Google search or is doing a Bing search. He's searching on the search engine, looking for cheap flight tickets. He might come on our website, but eventually not buy. Mm -hmm. Right. So you get a lot of traffic from the mobile website, but it does not, what we call as it does not convert that well as compared to the apps or the desktop. The app and the desktop user is much more intentful and hence tends to convert a lot more. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 can I ask one more question? Yeah. Yeah. So as we were discussing,
discussing about the gross uh, merchandise value i'm interested to know about the uh, from where this uh, gross mer merchandise value is coming from is it from the number of bookings or is it from the average ticket size i want to know the comparison yeah so gmv for uh, yeah. our gm our gmv simply the gross bookings number right so which is basically number of tickets we are selling and the average price of a ticket so it is number of tickets into the average price of a ticket so let's say i'm just making it up right so let's say 6 billion dollars of gmv let's say 2 billion dollars of those gmv came from flight tickets right so we would have sold some number of tickets right so we might have sold a million tickets at a certain price ticket so 1 million into that uh, that basically average ticket size of a flight ticket is the uh, is the gmv for flights as simple it is just number of tickets sold into whatever value of the ticket that you sold yeah yeah so uh, i just wanted to know the comparison between the hotel and a ticket like what is the average ticket size like okay so you wanted to know the average ticket size so obviously it changes from obviously quarter to quarter because a lot of but the typical average ticket size of a flight ticket would be anything between 7 to 10000 rupees don't quote me on this because i'm not looking after flights anymore but that will that is roughly i'm giving you a ballpark estimate so 7 to 10000 rupees would typically be a flight ticket size a hotel ticket would be make my trip is still a more premium brand so compared to go ibibo in terms of brand positioning so make on make my trip you will see like 4000 to 5000 rupees a typical hotel uh, hotel uh, booking right uh, <clears throat> so roughly and a typical hotel booking would have one and a half room nights so it's not like you are booking for only one day right you are booking for two days so on average we book for roughly one and a half room nights right so 5000 rupees is not the actual room night level price it is because uh, you are booking for one and a half room nights or two room nights on an average this way so you can say that okay typical your room night charge is 2500 rupees a room night right that's the kind of hotels 2500 3000 rupees a room night is what is getting sold on the make my platform right a typical train ticket average ticket size is around 800 to 900 rupees uh, that i know for sure because my last stint prior to this one was train so also i was looking at the trains business so i know that number very closely and then <clears throat> i think the bus ticket size would also be somewhere in the same ballpark 800 to 1000 rupees so that is how the typical ticket sizes look like for us cool anything else yeah thank you so i wanted you uh, actually sai asked about the mobile uh, the websites so one of the things is that for many uh, many the times when i browse on my mobile website so if i go to any let's say any some website so automatically they redirect me to play store to install that app correct so is there any rationale why make my trip doesn't do this uh, like or, or like Or are they already doing it? I'm not aware. We we do it. So what happens is, if you have the app installed, if you go to Google search and uh, search for anything, right, and a Make My Trip web link comes up, if you click on it, you will see the app gets launched. Yes. And, and the the reason is simple, right? Because we want to shift all the traffic to higher converting platforms, right? So we do it. Uh, and then when you land on the uh, uh, when you land, we directly don't land you to the Play Store. But let's say you clicked on something and you didn't have the app installed, you land on the pages, right? One of the web pages. Again, we ask, we again sort of nudge you, very, very uh, like in a very sort of uh, not not in your face kind of manner. But we try and nudge you to download the app. Mm -hmm. So on the page, you will see like callouts and basically call to actions to basically download the app. So there you will see. It. also you mentioned earlier that you know hotel business is generally uh, you are a very good leader in that business and uh, as compared to airlines business there is also almost minimal competition but, uh, so yeah. so so let me make it very clear we are leaders in both businesses we have more than 50% of market share in both hotels as well as airlines it's just that in airlines everyone is trying to battle you right so you have obviously your paytms clear trips exigos yatras right clear trip has now been acquired by uh, flipkart right so obviously they have become more aggressive right in hotel space that aggression is not there because if you look at some of the other companies they are still very much transport companies than accommodation companies right so if you look at paytm paytm does not have a that scale of supply of hotels uh, compared to make my trip right or for example right so that is the reason why like in in flights it is much more easier right because all you have to do is basically just go live with five suppliers right there are only five airlines or six airlines in hotels case you have to go out there and aggregate so much so many different hotels right which means it's a much harder sort of space to basically operate in right you have to get so many hoteliers on board versus in flights case you only have to get if you have to launch a domestic flights business you only have to partner with six airlines out there right which is why that space is much more competitive having said that the reason we we do so much cashback and discounting in air is simply because we are trying to protect our market share 
and we are like like just to put it on record we have more than 50% market share which effectively means we are bigger than all of the competition put together like you put together all of the competition we are bigger than them true got it, got it. <clears throat> anything else I think the gentlemen are participating quite a bit. I would like to see the ladies also participate. I don't know for some reason, maybe they don't like my face, but would love to see some participation coming from the ladies as well. <clears throat> I mean, don't ask questions just for the sake of it, but yeah, happy to take questions from you guys as well. Cool. Shall we move on? I think otherwise we'll run out of time. We have time only until four. We have quite a few things going on. Happy to take your questions offline also. Like you can mail it to me later if you have any more business related questions. <clears throat> so we'll move on. I think I knew that this section would probably take the maximum time. So I uh, kept it purposely at the beginning. So let's do some other other interesting bits. <clears throat> So now we'll talk about, so the next section, what I call is life cycle of a ticket, right? Uh, how does the ticket booking process actually happen at uh, GoMT group, right? Uh, what, what might look very simple and trivial from the surface actually has a lot of moving components, right? Moving parts behind the scenes. So let's walk through them. So the first slide, right? The first slide talks about Obviously you, you, let's say you want to do a flight ticket. You want to book a flight ticket. What do you do? You end up on the flights page, right? So we have make slash flights, right? On, on the website or on the app, you basically, you come to the app, right? And then you basically tap on the flights button, right? You end up on the flights or what we call as the flights landing page, right? The first page where you have the search widget, right? In the search widget, what do you see? You see a uh, origin. You have, you have the option to basically put in an origin, a destination, a fair class, right? Number of uh, passengers, right? And then basically you hit on search, right? Even the simplest sort of thing like this, right? For example, there are just so many cities, right? We offer both domestic flights as well as international flights. There are so many cities, right? Every city has an airport code, right? So let me just quickly uh, show it to you as well in case just to refresh your memory, right? So if I come here, <clears throat> So this is the page I'm talking about, right? Even the simplest of things, right? From, from, and you have just so many cities going on. Like, how do you get a list of these cities? Like, how would make my trip know, right? We are not a, uh, we are an internet company, right? We are not an airline company, right? How do we get these list of airports? And these list of airports continuously keep evolving, right? Like new airports keep getting added, right? Or something or the other is happening, right? How do we get it? Like. So that's the, uh, that's the first question I want you guys to basically talk. So how do we get origin and destination? How do we get the list of cities and airport codes? Every city then has an airport code that you need to know. So while this is not uh, happening, like the user does not have to input the airport code, but this is how the search actually works behind the scenes. You have to pass the airport code to actually know uh, for a particular sector, whether there are flights available or not. So how do we get the airport codes? And then we do some interesting stuff like fair calendar, right? So for example, if I just put something right, New York to Delhi, right. And I click on the, uh, date widget, we are able to show fares, lowest fares for each of those individual dates, right? This we call as the fair calendar. Like how do we build dynamic views like this? Like, what do you guys think? Like, how does something like this work? I would like to hear your opinions, thoughts on um, how even the simplest of things like these work. Yeah, so you would probably, this is my guess that you would probably have an API uh, or like system working on the fly, uh, like company ends of, so let's say Qatar Airways and uh, so on and so forth. And then uh, like a partnership, so whoever you have with, uh, and then you would collate that into one database. And then you would uh, have a function running as to select the minimum price on a date and uh, correlated with the calendar uh, as to setting. And for the airport codes, similarly, you, uh, the, I, I do not think you do not have to even know the airports. Rather than that, you can just, uh, suppose Etihad Airways can give you the airport codes, its flights are going to, and you can just co collate. And uh, as and when bookings are happening, uh, you can employ, a, let's say, a recommendation pattern wherein the higher number of bookings, it climbs up the charts. So let's say I, I am in Calcutta. So CCU, if I book a lot from CCU or my cookies suggest, 
then it will go higher up the charts that awesome. is i think chirandan you are pretty close obviously there are a lot more there's a lot more happening but i think that's a fairly good answer anyone else who wants to take a stab at it but it's a very good comprehensive answer i think it broadly covers most of the contours of the answer but i like obviously there there's a lot more happening behind the scenes but would like to have someone else take a stab at it one of please one of the ladies has to volunteer this time like someone should come and volunteer isha please for someone to basically volunteer from the women's group i'm not seeing a lot of participation from the women's group don't be scared guys this is just like free information sharing uh, I, I, the reason i'm asking you to sort of take a stab at it is just to like understand like uh, how how do you like visualize something like this and hopefully i will be able to answer your queries but richa do you want to take a guess um okay um i am thinking that for the um, for the airport coach you might be uh, speaking to the companies or statutory body of aviation sector so that they keep on you know there is some partnership with the government bodies as well or these companies who basically are a participants of making uh, new airports and that will be the direct and most uh, you know uh, uh, shortest way of finding out and getting data about the uh, the airports and uh, i sort of agree with uh, chitrantan about uh, about the calendar thing as well so you have the partnership with these uh, all these airline companies so uh, you are constantly in contact with them uh, about the lowest price and also um, i i don't know whether this is involved or maybe there there is a little bit of uh, you know prediction involved as well because uh, in the coming you, we can see uh, like 6 uh, 5 6 months also we can see what other coming rates correct, and, correct, correct. and yes. so basically we are sort of modeling it into uh, into a way that it gives the users an idea about what the prices are going to be later and then again we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of offers and plans with make my trip as well of pay now and book later yes. i forgot to add like it, like when like with richa what says it came to my mind so you would also maybe have a, a way of analyzing prices at competitors and trying to set your margins accordingly otherwise uh, like you know you cannot have a fixed margin he uh, like let's say 5000 rupees only like it's not like that so you can you have to dynamically change that and that would primarily depend on what is the going rate in the market because obviously you're getting the tickets like the seats at a much lower price and you are setting a price on top of that that is my question got it awesome answers i think i really love both the answers chirantan richa thank you so much for volunteering so abhi ke liye we'll not get into so i'll not get into the pricing discussion right away let's just talk about how the information flows we'll get into a pricing discussion later otherwise we'll just i didn't uh, i i don't want to address that part just now i'll i'll address it at later stage but let's first walk through how the information comes right so let's see how it happens uh <clears throat> so what happens so obviously you have the website or the app right so mt.com make matter .com or make matter app right and abhi ke liye i'm just just telling you that okay there is a black box called what we call as the make matter flight engine okay and what happens is any time any a web be it our mobile website or desktop website or our android app or our, or or our ios app or any app we might write in the future or any website we might launch in the future all of them have to talk to our central make matter flight engine right which is which will pass on all the different information right and in in sort of internet terms this is your client and this is your back end right what we call as the back end right which which is the engine that basically passes all the information so what happens it says give me airport code codes and flight engine says sure here they are and the client does not need to know the app or the website does not need to know uh, that how is the flight engine getting it all they know is okay the flight engine is responding back with some information right and they are basically showing it on the ui right so the whoever is uh, developing the website or the app they are like okay the flight engine is giving me the airport code i don't care where do how the flight engine is getting the airport code from where they are getting the airport code i don't know but they are definitely giving returning me the airport code airport code so i will build my ui on top of it the way i want to and basically present it to the user right and the way it works is 
so very similar right so like you have dif- you have different urls for the websites the- there would be a url like makemytrip.com slash airport codes which which does not return a website but actually returns to data which which we call as an api right which what chirantan was referring to so an api is nothing but something a url that actually instead of returning you a full blown website it actually returns you raw data and then you use that raw data to build your screen so i'll just quickly do a small demo very simple demo right so let's see how the airport codes come in right <clears throat> so so this is my browser you can see my browser right now right can you anyone yeah, yeah. okay yes yes so now in the browser we have something like you don't have to worry about what i have launched just now but basically there's something called developer tools right so you are able to see what kind of uh, requests are going out and coming in right so so and in the developer view i am on the network tab so as you know network network is basically something like any anything that is go, going over the internet and coming back it will get recorded here right so i already have the website open right and uh, so obviously something is happening but that's fine we can uh, ignore it so now if i go to this uh, origin selector right if i select something here right automatically you see some things are going via the internet right and if i look if if i just open this one up or a better way to show this would be uh Oh, what, what's copy link one? address. Yeah, copy link address. Yes. So if I show you, this link is actually this. This is like any other URL. But what is happening is when I hit on it, it will actually return you instead of a web instead of a website. It is returning you data. And if I just like obviously this data is hard to read, but if I just put it in something, so let me just quickly see if I can. Mm. I think this one will be better. So you saw that it returned me some data. I I I've just put that data here. I'm just sitting on process. And now it is much more structured. You with much nicer formatting. So you can see right. So it is returning me an icon. It is returning me the city. Uh, obviously the airport city. The airport country. the iata code which is the airport code for that uh, airport which is bomb uh, the full airport name and then whatever cc is something else and then obviously the icon right so because it's, it's a flight thing it's showing a flight icon which is which, which is what is this one Th- this flight icon right even the flight icon is coming from uh, this right my flight engine right only then you will be able to show the flight icon right so so that is how this works right so there is a flight engine so all my clients basically talk to my flight engine get all this information back and all of this information is being returned by uh, what what i call as what what jonathan rightly called as an api so api is nothing but a url that basically instead of giving you the full sort of website it gives you data so far so good clear so that is how we are like showing some of this information is this clear not clear okay so i'll just move on <clears throat> uh and just sort of adding a little more color so and how the flight engine is getting the airport code it could be something that you would have configured internally also right so one option is like we get a list of so we periodically look, look at the list of airport codes right so let's say every 3 months we look at the list of airport codes and if we find that okay something new has gotten added we might be getting that even in an excel dump right and we get that excel dump and put it into our empty, upload it into our mt flight engine and mt flight engine is able to respond like a very simple way of doing it could even be that or you could be getting it dynamically from some other system the mt flight engine might be getting it from some other system like uh, like some of you pointed out that there might be partnerships with some other companies or some other agencies right who might be like we might be integrated directly with the technical connection with those guys and they might be responding with airport codes to us real time right so both options are there what we do will get to that but this this is how this thing works does this help uh, is, is this clear so far because 
this little bit is little more uh, tricky to understand important to understand just want to make sure that you guys have understood it. any yes no answer would help yes it's clear yes yes yeah, it's clear yeah. cool uh only chirandran is participating what happened to the rest of the guys guys come on uh, i I, <laughs> i also put in a lot of effort to actually put all of this information together so i want little more enthusiastic participation would really help uh yeah even a simple yes no helps me anyone else it's clear and not it's yeah. not it's clear okay so uh, moving on so yeah so let's talk about the second slide so now once you put in the information in the search widget right we uh, we call it the search widget you are putting in all the different information and now you are getting all the different flight op options right so you obviously put in your origin your destination your our uh, dates your fair classes and after that what you see is what we call as the search results page right or the listing page right so now if i get here i'm closing this i am putting anything so new york to delhi uh, i have a lot of money so i'll travel to us <laughs> and just put some date i have specifically taken the international example now you have so many different airlines right so you have american you have kuwait you have etihad you have air india right so many different airlines you have british airways like how do you think we get all of this information all the different airline options right you have united air canada right there's just so many different airlines in the world again right especially when you look at international flight options so how would someone like make matter of a company like make matter of get information from so many different airlines so like what do you guys think so just get here so these companies might be having their aps where you send the specific query it is like what is the to and from and what is the date and type of the passenger and Correct. accordingly we'll be so, getting the yes the rest perfect perfect theek okay. hai so we'll will uh, i'll just hold you there perfect anyone else who wants to take a stab at this what is your like can you repeat the question one is like so my question was like you have so many different airlines right like yeah. if if for a particular sector new york to new delhi you have like probably like you have like 20 different airlines 25 different airlines and obviously there are so many different sectors right mm. which are served by many different airlines so in the entire world there might be i don't know i'm just making it up 1000 plus airlines or 1500 2000 airlines mm. how is it that my my trip is able to get information about all of these different airlines which are on all of these are on different systems right so how how does make matter connect with so many different systems and able to show all of this information in one central place so like uh, let's say uh, uh, for example if uh, american airlines uses a python based system even then like they would have the apis so uh, to interface with yours right so right. Uh, irrespective of legacy systems or any other system anyone has uh, employed it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter because api will work as an abstraction engine basically uh correct you are absolutely correct but that means that i have to go and physically integrate with 2000 different systems okay uh, i understand right yeah so this and that's not trivial right that's not a trivial thing if i have to go and integrate with 2000 different airlines i'll be dead right i will not be able to make a business out of this True. hello sorry yeah i'm audible Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so just to think from other perspective, I think uh, 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 make matter directly connects with the uh, like any country or any location or any central system from where we can. Let's say if uh, it is uh, New York, maybe uh, any entity directly we talk to uh, from New York and then get all the flight details, the different airlines they are. There must operating. be some data aggregator in the middle. Awesome, perfect. Central system. Perfect. So yes, <laughs> so that is what I was getting to. so there is an aggregator in in travel world also which is called a global distribution system it is called a gds right and i i'll just add a little bit nuance also right so the the real thing that is happening is you saw the earlier picture the make matter flight engine itself does not have any information right we are not the airlines company so the way they are getting this information is through an aggregator which is called a global distribution system it's like a standard acronym terminology in travel world right so gds is basically someone who aggregates all the flight information if you go look at the history of gds the first gds is in travel industry they started way way back right because ultimately the airline companies also wanted a easy way wanted to offer an easy way to their end customer to book tickets even to the travel agents to book tickets right so for the first phase was 
computerized reservation systems and the second phase was building an aggregator on top of it so the first set of gdss were actually launched by the airline companies themselves they basically pulled together as a consortium and they basically launched a gds so we also get information from gds a gds and gds stands for global distribution system and <clears throat> and exactly what chirandan called out gds what are gds gds are basically aggregators of all the travel supply who created gds which i already called out basically the airline companies themselves came together and built gdss simply because they they had to reach their final audience right otherwise it is very suboptimal that okay a travel agent with a dedicated linux terminal is sitting somewhere right and then he has to access the terminal which means uh, he has to put in a lot of investment a capex investment to basically uh, build something like this and then booking can only happen over a phone call right because end customer will never be able to access right so the the airline companies themselves sort of built out these gdss there are a bunch of gdss uh, in the world there is not just one gds company in the world there are a bunch of gds companies so if if you go to google search and just search for gds right uh let's see what happens i am also doing the search for the first time uh so so you see there are a lot of companies right so there is amadeus there is saber there is travel port right so there are a bunch of gdss out there which basically acts as a middleman act as a middleman between us and supply right so we are like a travel agent right we are just a online travel agent not a uh, offline travel agent but ultimately we are also connecting to the gds to basically get all the information that we need to get at least in flight case this is cool so and that these gds or aggregators you are talking about are they open source or like does mmt pay for it or like other companies pay for no, it no 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 so obviously make matter has to pay for it so if i if you go to let's say uh uh i'll, I'll talk about one of the largest um, uh largest sort of gdss today so if you look at it this is amadeus right stock price of 62.34 euros revenue is 5 Uh, like uh, this is like 5.57 billion uh, euros right so obviously these are for profit companies they will not give you a, give you apis just for the sake of it right these are for profit companies which have built very large businesses uh, by basically doing the aggregation job and basically providing all the travel agents meet online offline like apis on which they can you can build your own products right so this this is a for profit organization and everything is obviously charged to make matter Okay, just one question. Have you ever like has the like I do not know anything about this, uh, but like uh, there are web crawler services, right? Do they help or in any way? Because you have a I do not know what is the amount of you are paying on a yearly basis or to Amadeus or any other GDS, but do, do using web so, crawler services? Good point, Charan. See, the point is web crawlers are. see what happens is when you write a web crawler you are basically trying to crawl a website right yes. that website can change the structure any day right today make matter looks like this so let's say make matter today someone is trying let's say i am trying to launch my own travel startup and i try crawling the affairs uh, from make matter right and try to build my own website correct correct what do i have to do i have to basically go out there and basically first know each of each sector that is out there right so new york uh, new delhi new york bombay new york chennai right then i have mm. to go crawl the make matter website the make matter website itself can change any time right which means my crawl crawler can break down any time right understood understood so, so, so you these, would always need to yeah. change so th- these ways are not sustainable like it might you it's not <laughs> easy to build like you can get some you can build a content based product but it's very hard to build like a booking based product where the prices need to be real time right and not only you have to crawl it you have to crawl it practically real time right so that is why building a travel booking kind of uh, startup based on crawling is not possible you can build a content based product right so let's say right. i am trying to build a trip advisor right that is possible right because that content is static it is not changing real time got it got so i have a question yeah uh, so the mmt competitors will also be using similar uh, platforms right Absolutely. so how does uh, mmt differentiate in terms of the number of flights that we're showing awesome great question uh, i'll i'll address that monica wonderful question i really loved it so we'll address it at the end uh, i'll just quickly go through the rest of the slides and then i'll address some of these wonderful questions 
right so i have just parked it don't worry i'll i'll take it uh, uh so yeah so uh, the way so like you understood like you basically get you can get information from amadeus i had a demo for amadeus also but i'll just skip it in the interest of time but basically like the way you saw right you saw the make matrix url right uh you saw the make matrix url so make matrix.com/pwa region equals in which was returning data very similar to that amadeus also provides apis which is why i put a screenshot out here just to sort of see if if we would have time you would do it so something similar you can do with amadeus so amadeus there are amadeus urls that return you data so they actually return you airline information they actually return you airline fare all of it real time so i actually have a quick demo maybe at the end of it if there is time i'll show it to you but basically you can see uh, that you can hit the amadeus api and get back information which will actually give you like the airline information or the airline fare uh, we'll see if if i can show you at the end of it so that is how it is happening you are basically getting all the information from gds right now coming to again the next slide uh you will see uh, so again right so again after search is a speech so uh, anra uh, yeah. can i ask a question yeah so yeah. Uh, these gds so do they have data on all the operators that are operating in the world or do they have data on just a limited set correct awesome question lakshya so here is a quick answer to that so uh, see gds is in the business of giving you the maximum supply right otherwise an agent will not integrate with you right but having said that it's true that not all like every gds has their own strengths and weaknesses which is why there are so many different companies in that space so travel port would have uh, travel port would probably have uh, because it's slightly upstart gds it's a new gds compared to amadeus so it will have slightly better more aggressive pricing and will probably have lesser operators on its platform because it's still a newer company compared to amadeus amadeus is a far older company so it will have a much larger spectrum of suppliers but then it would have a far more aggressive pricing right it would it will uh, it will charge you much more than probably a travel port would now what happens is as an ota or as a travel agent as make matter you have to decide whether you want to go with travel port or you want to go with amadeus and the way you take that call is basically understanding that the sectors that you are going to serve the most right obviously in our search space also there is a 80 20 right like 80% of the users would be searching certain specific sectors right and if if a certain gds has supplies most of the airlines from those sectors i think i i might still go with travel port but even if it has less set of suppliers compared to amadeus right so that is how a travel agent would think about uh yeah got it got it. cool so the next step is <clears throat> next step is then after the listing page right so this we call as the search results page so now you say view prices right so let's say i click on air india oh sorry am i sharing my screen no right oh yes i am right and then i continue and i come to a page like this right so this obviously has a lot of fair information and this you can uh, like i already explained is coming from a gds right in our case we actually use amadeus at make matter right so this this information is coming from amadeus obviously this this part of the information is um, coming from amadeus but then you have a whole lot of other details also coming in right for example something like important information right which is basically the travel guidelines right especially in the uh, in uh, in today's scenario where there is covid right so how do you think something like this comes in right or even things like uh, the promotional codes right where do you think these things are coming from so promo codes will like you you will have a marketing team uh, who will like actively be in charge of like in 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 a marketing team in a sub section who will be in charge of promo codes uh, i guess there will be a liaison to financial departments uh, for that uh, so they they would uh, like coordinate to supply that and again they would I, i guess a simple way could be fetching a data from as simple thing as a, a you know excel sheet in the form of a, you know if you if you configure the website to read like that let's say a django pr program uh, and uh, apart from that like uh, anurag i don't think you set uh, or any details right now so your name and everything so perhaps there was an existing cookie so perhaps they will uh, you know also be reading existing right. cookie Fetching the data, anything for perfect. That. So yeah, so great point. So let me just quickly change my search. 
the reason why information came in was because i was already logged in okay but sorry any, you are logged in sorry okay yeah, but in any case that's uh, that's not really the main point so i think you kind of covered pretty nicely charantan i'll just sort of change uh, it to the domestic sector to make it a little more can i add something to what charantan has mentioned uh, yeah, sure so i think promo codes would be based on if a visitor is new to the website or probably is an existing customer so okay. based on if you want to acquire right. or retain correct them. correct so great great great. awesome yeah so basically we do a lot of other things so obviously the base information is coming from gds right because obviously the flight information everything i don't have it's it is something that has to come from gds but a lot of other things also that i show on my website they come from my own internal systems like i am the guardian for information of all those systems for example something like travel restrictions like what are the advisory state guidelines there is no central system that aggregates that right there is no business to be made out of it it's a temporary thing right so what we have done is we have built our own system which basically pass some of these components right so every page is basically every page on the website you see is basically an, is is basically an aggregate of multiple things some of the information is coming from dds some of the information is coming from our home grown systems even stuff like this used code mt super right that uh, the deal codes everything is coming some of some of these things are coming from our home grown systems right which is what i was alluding to uh and obviously because this is a home grown system so both of you are correct karunya uh, right so uh, uh, so be, because these are home grown systems i can decide right uh, what to show to whom based on how much i know about you right so to karunya i will show a different uh, deal code to anurag i will show a different deal code right to chirantan i will show a different deal code to monica i will show a different deal code so those are the kind of smartness and uh, good things i can do because i know a lot about you uh, based on your past behavior based on your past search history right and that kind of briefly addresses a question that you asked monica right so supply is only one part of it right so even if we cannot differentiate ourselves on supply we can build things that can add a lot of value to the user right and those things are not coming from gds those things are based on how well we understand your user behavior and how do we feel we can best serve monica's needs or chirantan's needs or karunya's needs or someone else's needs right so the the fair calendar for example the fair calendar view is a custom view that's something that only like we did right it is not it is not information coming from gds directly we basically uh, look at what are the typical what is the typical search behavior how far out the user searches right and then we basically uh, uh, index the lowest fares for each particular sector each of the popular sectors not every sector each of the popular sectors so for example i'll show you uh if you are seeing this widget right this 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 is a, is a simpler fair calendar widget it, because it's a very popular sector new delhi mumbai you are seeing pretty much dates fares for every date but if we, it if it were something like new delhi to let's say chilli right which is not a very popular sector could see most of it is empty because we would not have indexed those fares because that's not a very typical search pattern on our platform right so those are the kind of smart things we do that we build a fair calendar view and then we put smartness on top of it that whatever sectors are being searched most often will build views for those first right it makes sense to do those first right so that is how we kind of add value to you right so uh, instead of like searching again and again feb 14 feb 15 feb 16 you have a bird's eye view of all the fares right out here right and that is exactly how different otas add value to their customers right so uh, moving on so anurag besides yeah. just internal api calls you must have built some internal apis and app systems or dashboard correct correct, correct. Team, which, right? exactly exactly which is the next slide uh, which is this so this is why you need a mmt flight engine right because see your your app or website can only talk to one engine it cannot it well that's not the right way of building things you typically talk to one engine but that centralized engine is then in talk talking to like 10 different engines for example i do like uh, what we have a feature called cabs right so let's say you're booking a flight i also try to pitch you a cab that hey uh, let's say you are building, uh, booking a delhi bangalore flight from bangalore to your hotel or bangalore to your office right when you are going to arrive in bangalore you book a cab through us also right so when when we are presenting uh, the web page right what we are doing is we are getting information from gds but we are also getting information from our in house cabs engine which is telling me that okay for bangalore sector i have these vehicle options available 
right so you can book a sedan you can book uh, you can book a hatchback you can book book a more premium sedan also these are five six different options for this particular flight time right so so everything is getting aggregated at mt flight engine level which is our common back end system for all our customer all our clients or all, all the websites and all the apps that we have does this help yes sir and you know, also in one of your slides it was written that like not just written i noticed it too like like for example when you are seeing viewing the calendar page or when you are viewing the main page and then when you go on to check the price of the flight and once you go on to the landing page the price changes so why does companies don't fix that because many times we the customers fall off or correct correct great are not able to convert great. the customers just because of that why not build a more dynamic api which uses a cloud server or something of that kind rather than cache which like reloads it a little later so why right. do you not do that yeah, yeah absolutely so the reason why that happens is uh, is because you have too many options to present on your ui on the search results page right on search results page you have 30 different airline options that you have to present if you are to get real time fair information for all of those 30 airlines you will take a long time to uh, like actually create that page and present it to the user right it will take a lot of time to basically get all the information real time for all the different 30 airlines even though it is coming from gds only sometimes what happens is like the question lakh said right that the gds may not have all the different airlines right so you might be talking to let's say a spicejet system independently right so if you have to get all of that information real time it will take a lot of time for that page to load that itself is a big turn off for the user so what happens is on the search results page we we kind of index the fares every whatever uh, 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes but on the details page on the flight details page because you have now have only one airline right because you have chosen a airline now you have to fetch real time information only for one airline that is much faster hence on the details page the fare changes and fare updates so that's again a conscious call that we have taken and that's actually something that most of the otas actually do i get it like i see it in many platforms like yeah yeah cool so i'll move on i think we have covered most of it uh so largely this is how the system works the last slide basically just talks about multiple different steps so initially you get flight options which itself is coming from gds and then uh, then you basically create like a token order it's not really an order order it's like a placeholder order right which again goes to the flight engine which basically creates a temporary order on the gds and when you actually complete the payment when you actually do the payment the payment flows from us to the gds and that is how when the payment happens the ticketing happens right so there is a placeholder order that is created then the payment is payment happens when the payment and the placeholder order match right then that is when the airline actually issues the ticket which uh, which through the gds comes to us which is why sometimes you might see that the payment has happened but the ticket has not arrived because those are two independent steps the, the order creation the dummy order creation step uh, for some time and then eventually the ticketing only happens when the payment happens obviously which makes sense right so that is how the entire the final flow the end to end flow works is this clear Uh, uh, so GDS is not only a data aggregator, but also provides booking services to uh, us uh, to platform. Absolutely, them. absolutely. Because ultimately, see, you cannot physically connect with two hundred different airlines, right? So you basically pass the information to GDS. GDS takes care of making, uh, taking care of all the two hundred different airlines. See, I am in the business of online ticketing. I am not in the business of connecting with airlines, right? so there are aggregators out there who basically get me the information and obviously are also responsible both ways right information coming from airlines to us and then when customer makes a payment or customer tries to book a order again gets routed through gds goes to the airline uh, systems uh, matches the payment to the order creation and then basically flows the ticket to us so everything like the most of the back end complexity is being handled by gds in this case this this is the case in airline ticketing this is not the case in hotel ticketing but airline ticketing uh, i wanted to give you a sample example so airline ticketing this is how it works got it cool uh, uh, and just to start, sort of give you that parallel from hotel ticketing you can think of make my trip as a gds for hotels in case of hotel booking we have created our own gds right because uh, there is no gds for domestic hotels right there is there is no company in the world which is trying to aggregate Domestic hotels in India, 
right? So we built our own GDS system for hotels business, uh, domestic hotels business, right? And that makes a lot of sense because we are an India centric company, right? Uh, a different company uh, would not probably aggregate domestic hotel supply in India, right? But in airlines case, because GDS is such a standard norm has been there in the industry for such a long time, uh, by uh, when Make My Trip started, the GDSs were already in place, which is why you would partner with the GDS and not try to do it all by your own, because that would take a lot more effort and a lot more capital investment than actually just going out there and partnering with the GDS. So, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. So building on that, so let's say, uh, uh me as an Indian try, tries to go to, let's say us and, uh, I'm using make my trip to make hotel bookings there. I'm, I'm not sure if, if that's available or not, I'm just making an assumption. So yeah. if, if a, if a central GDS is not available anywhere in the world, so let's say a company like make my trip would be existing in the U S market as well, that would have aggregated data for themselves. So you would be, so you, then that company, that particular, uh, company becomes your, the GDS for you. And yes. You awesome. Correct. Bilkul, bilkul sahi aapne lakshe. So this is how it happens. So if I have to go to the U S market and obviously I have strengths in India, I don't, I have aggregated Indian domestic supply, but I cannot aggregate U S supply. What I'll do is I'll partner with another company, a similar company in the U S right? Like think of it like, so there is, there's a very strong competitor we have called booking.com. So booking.com is very, very strong and famous in Europe and they have aggregated a lot of hotel supply in Europe, right? So if I have to go launch, uh, hotels in Europe, all I have to do is basically talk to booking.com, get their APs. So while I am a competitor to booking.com, I'm also a partner with booking.com because booking.com has already put in that legwork and actually integrated all the hotels in Europe. Right. So that is exactly how it works. So you are absolutely correct. Bang on. Cool. Uh, awesome. So I think the tech part is over. I think we are already through two last sections and I hope this was useful. So now let's, uh, so now we are moving on to a lighter section, but before that we can quickly have a, because I think most of you guys are already sleeping by now. I'm pretty sure I put you to sleep so we can have a quick sort of fun quiz before we move on to the next section. Thank you, Virag, and I hope uh, most of the people guess the right answer, at least here. So, Ishani, can we start? Yeah, Isha, first one is on the PPT. Right, so if you can just uh, uh, share with the participants what exactly are they expecting in the next couple right. of slides. Yeah. Right, so the first round uh, for everybody's uh, information is going to be, it's a short quiz. Uh, we, do, we just have five questions, but it's all on travel themed movies. So I'm sure all of you would have watched, uh, would be Bollywood buffs. So it's for all of you. So what we'll do is we will be sharing a screenshot from the movie and there will be a timer running in the background. So you just have 10 seconds to guess the right answer and four MCQs will be on your screen. So I would request everyone to be on unmute for this round because if you start typing on the chat, the timer will run out. So just be on unmute and if you guess the right answer, you can just uh, say it out loud. So I think we can move to the first uh, question, Isha. Sure, sure. Thank and you. we'll see the answer right after the timer runs out. So the first question is on your screen now. Please unmute yourself. Pain. 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 I think the easiest to read an MD something which everyone would have watched. So I think yes, okay. is the right answer. Yeah. Okay. Second question coming up. Uh, three idiots. Three idiots. Three idiots. We definitely have Bollywood movie fans here. I I, I got this one wrong. I didn't know what this movie was. <laughs> I was three idiots, but somehow I thought this must be something else. And I... <laughs> the Volvo car is unique. Yeah. yeah, the Volvo car is unique actually. Yeah, moving on to the next. This so you need to guess an attraction from the place where this famous movie is shot. Eiffel Tower. It's in Paris. Yes. Queen. This is the movie I'm sure all of us would have watched it. But that's great again. Uh, we can move to the next one. This this destination was a lot talked about when this movie came out. Croatia. 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 My God, everyone is getting everything correct. All answers. <laughs> Anurag, this, this, I have no clue. I don't even know which movie this is. Like, <laughs> Samasha. 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 Okay. Got it. 
Okay, mo yeah. ano, last one coming. Last one for this part. All money heist fans for you. Uh, Japan. 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 So Tokyo is the character's name. If you haven't watched Money Heist, please go ahead watch it. It's a great show. But yeah, I think this uh, uh, quiz has come to an end. We have one more fun quiz. This this is again travel theme, but uh, we'll run it as a poll too. So uh, both PPT and poll, in fact. So the first question, Isha, you can flash the first question. I'll just share the. So Shani, how many seconds are we giving to the participants to guess this right? We'll try uh, to like give them ten seconds, but uh, we'll just hope that everyone puts in their answers in the uh, poll. So poll is on your screen. You need to guess which country this is. The flag is also on the. Okay, we already have one response. So let's give it ten more seconds. And again, please take a guess. There's. It's just a game, so we'll see who's right and wrong. Okay, two more seconds to go. Someone else is. ये तो geography के basis पे answer किया जा सकता है. It's pretty easy. You don't even need to know the flag. Absolutely. Okay, we'll share the poll results and. I hope no one has no one has marked Libya. Oh my God, someone has marked Libya also. Oh, oh. <laughs> the correct answer is Hungary. <laughs> But uh, I think a lot of people got confused with Italy too. <laughs> But great, I think we have five people who answered correctly. So I think a precondition to joining Make My Trip is your geography needs to be good. <laughs> It cannot be this bad. Like Libya, come on, <laughs> Libya to Europe may. <laughs> वो अनबाल हम बोलते हैं ना वे ट्रैवल इंटरेस्ट्स बट एट द एंड वी डोंट नो थिंग्स Love this. ये ये तो मैं ट्विटर पे ट्वीट करूंगा कि मेरे न्यू ज्वाइन ही सोचते हैं कि लीबिया यूरोप में है दिस इज फन चलो नेक्स्ट ऑसम नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अगेन ऑन योर स्क्रीन एंड आई विल शेयर द पोल सो यू कैन फिल इन योर गेसेस फ्लैग इज ऑन द स्क्रीन टू दिस इज अ टफ वन Please, please take guesses, guys. We have only five responses. Okay, two options are winning. We we'll close the poll in five seconds. If every anyone is wrapping up, great. I'll share the results. I think. Majority yes, majority have gotten this correct. This is the Philippines. So Anurag, I think this is something that people knew. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Good job, guys. This is great. Ah, uh, one more flag question, and then we move to something else. So this is for all the soccer fans. I'm sure people will. Guys, it's so very easy. Yeah, R C R seven. Hey, tell me, tell me. Yes. So guys, five seconds. Please fill the poll. Rightly said, I think majority have gotten. Everyone has gotten this right. Thank God. This वाले ये वाले अगर आप लोग wrong करते हैं ना तो सही में फिर मुझे ना बात करनी पड़ती है चार से कि लगता है किसी का तो offer letter cancel कराना पड़ेगा. Nay, great. This is Portugal. Yes. Hello. Thank God. Happy. Very happy actually. Okay. Fourth question. Yeah, we move on to the next question, which is the second last question of this complete part. Now this again is easy because either you guess it by the tag name or the picture which is on the screen. I think most of them will guess it right. Yes, everyone has actually, which is Kerala. Kerala is the right answer. Awesome. We know our country well. <laughs> Great. Okay, last one. Last question. so this is a uh, two correct answers you can choose from the poll <coughs> whichever one you think okay this also a lot of people are answering correctly in fact everyone has answered this correctly wow <laughs> great awesome bhutan and nepal are the two uh, Countries you can travel without a visa. So if you're planning your grad trip, you can probably go there. <laughs> Great. 
thank you so much guys i think that was a short quiz to wake you up if you i hope know. it was a welcome break from all the bakwas i've been doing so far <laughs> uh <clears throat> but it was fun even i enjoyed the quizzes thank you great anurag maybe we can uh, go back to your slide and uh, it yeah. might get spilled over so we have anu also who have joined us i think most of you know her so i think at the end uh, 10 minutes we can have q and a yeah so i think we are mostly done through the hardcore parts now we have the uh more philosophical bits right so these are pretty easier ones to get through so let's quickly get through these <clears throat> so we'll talk about how to practically think about product management at this organization right how do we like obviously the flavors of product management are slightly different at different organizations so how does it like how is it different for us right and actually like if i could sort of tell you i think i really enjoy our flavor of product management i think it's a very practical and very sort of a uh, grounded flavor right so we are measured on outcomes we are not measured on output right which means that whatever you launch uh, you are always focused on moving some numbers delivering some business for the organization which which actually makes you a pretty rock solid 360 degree kind of product manager right so so what are the kind of product problems we face right so uh, i'll just quickly read through it so obviously first thing is get more users to try out our product right and this is not just a marketing thing right so marketing will obviously drive a lot of traffic to the product but then you also have to think about what kind of product problems you can solve which will attract more users right and make them come to our apps and our website and not our competitor right so that's one second is improving the efficiency of the product once the user comes to our product we have to make sure that we want him to do a certain action right we want him to make a booking right uh, we want him to uh, try out something else right so we want that all those material actions that we want the user to take should happen right and that is how we measure our efficiency right which is output our input our output is like driving bookings our input is traffic right so which we call as conversion right so that is what we care about improving customer satisfaction once the user goes through a certain milestone process be it a booking or something else right maybe checking up his refund details we want to make sure that it was as per his satisfaction right so that's third right so obviously first getting in the user secondly getting them to do the milestone event that you want them to do once they do it measuring their satisfaction and the final bit is continue to do this with continuously better economics for the organization right if you throw a lot of discounts at the customer obviously people will do the booking right but that is not sustainable right so you have to find ways to basically uh offer a wonderful experience to the user so that they still come to your product do it even if your competitor might be offering better discounts right that is that is the hard part of being a product manager right how do you achieve this right so and obviously how do you measure each of these right so the first bit is getting more users to try out your product right so how do you look at it you look at new user percentages right so you look at your traffic splits and you figure out how many of what percentage of these users were new users uh how how is the first time user behavior different from a repeat user behavior right so once the repeat user comes in second time third time fifth time how is he behaving versus a completely new user right whether he is able to the new user because he is not used to your product whether he is able to do what he wants to do right second metric is efficiency of the product is measured by conversion conversion like i said like like in physics right output upon input so what is output output is basically number of transactions what is input input is basically number of users coming to our website or app which which in internet terms is called traffic right so uh, transactions upon traffic on our website app is basically what we call as conversion so your goal as a product manager is to keep improving this conversion number third thing is customer satisfaction how do you measure customer satisfaction if your customer is satisfied he is going to repeat so you look at transaction level repeats so how many of those customers who made a booking in let's say january how many of them are like within the next 6 months how many of those guys are repeating right so you look at repeat rates repeat rates is a great signal of whether the customer is happy or not and then a software way of measuring it is nps which is called a net promoter score right uh, which is like the uh, 10 scale grid that was set up by i think a harvard professor or i don't know I forget the name but basically how many of your customers are delighted how many of your customers are detractors how many of your customers are promoters which are delighted how many of your customers are detractors and would not recommend your product to anyone else and the fourth bit is what i was talking about like how do you continue doing this uh, with better cost economics so how do you do it by offering better personalization by actually understanding what you need right at a hyper segmented level like if 
if i if i can understand like if my product can understand what karunya exactly wants and offer her that tailored experience right she would obviously come to my product for the amount of convenience that i'm offering her compared to let's say going to some other product even if they might be offering great discounts right? and this is exactly the amazon way of doing things right so that's exactly how we think about it also like how do we offer better and better more delight, delightful ex- delightful experiences to our customers right so those are the key goals that is how you measure your success in this organization and what are the key skills to basically deliver on those goals uh, i think i'll just ask you guys right how do you think you can do a good job on some of the things that i talked about just quick sort of dipstick just 20 seconds what do you guys think how how can you do it like if you have to build delightful experiences what are the kind of skills you would want to lean on one of the things that i primarily think is the ability to understand the psyche of a person like how so right from the person when he enters the app to till he exits what goes on through the mind so talk, talking to a lot of people getting to know them and uh, also the i guess uh, the ability to balance out i would say some compromise on some cases because i might want a very attractive uh, you know appearance but that you know might have some other effects in the background which right. might not lead to a lot of conversion so these, these are perhaps the greatest awesome. things great answer charan the love it so anyone else who wants to take a start and yeah i would say externally i would go for customer profiling and analysis and internally i would say diplomacy is also a key skill because stakeholder management is important perfect perfect so you guys actually hit on on the first skill which is like customer centricity empathy like that's the most important like how is the user behavior changing right uh, a like at a macro level like how are indian users behaving and then at a micro level right how do, how does anurag behave how does isha behave how does ishani behave right actually understand like what do they really really need because until unless you know what they need you will not be able to build a product that services their needs the second thing is obviously in ninja data skills right obviously because see in any web company like so much data and like you can, like i'll give you an example i'll show you example just after this you can actually like there's so much data to look at that it will mind boggle you right it is easier said than done so having a great sharp sort of uh, numeracy like having great sharp numeracy having great sense of data delivering the right insights is actually very very important third thing is market savvy market savvy when i say market savvy what it means is actually understanding how how the market itself is evolving right what might be true today is not probably true 24 months later right so understanding where the market is moving like a broader sense of the overall market what the market size is what how are the different uh, sort of user segments within that larger market behaving right so all those things are important and finally the most important thing is grit right to get a great product out there there's so many small small steps right for example i just showed you how uh, even the simplest of l- l- the landing page works right like just the smallest of landing pages has so many different components right so just to launch a landing page you have to think about so many different things right so to build any great product and to polish it to an extent that is great for the user i think you have to think about plan think and do a lot of things and just push through all the different hurdles that you might face right so i think the biggest i think important soft skill for for any product management role is high agency what i call is high agency be able to push through hurdles it's not like ki maine bas ek document bana diya high level gyan de diya designer ko bol diya design bana do engineer ko bol do maine order de diya aur wo log karke de denge that that's not how the role works you have to make sure at every stage that every loophole is covered every functional case is documented it is covered in your requirements document uh, you have understood your customer really really well so that your odds of success are good right which is what uh, some of these slides are right so customer centricity what can we build that will drive more users to our product what is happening in terms of changing user habits that we need to sort of account for how do we improve the efficiency of our booking processes how do we get more users to repeat right so fairly straight forward i uh, i'm pretty sure these are pretty simple to understand like like i'm just i've just given a sample sort of representative pay, uh, customer like how do you address like how do you come up with innovative ideas right so this is one example right so for example uh, for example in the case of train bookings right you know that 
trains as a supply starved market right there's uh, there are not enough there's not enough supply than there are people looking to book right and there are a lot of wait listed bookings right so we launched a unique product which says that hey if you're getting a wait listed booking you book now you don't have to pay any money you only pay when you are getting confirmed right think of it simply right like today you have to pay money just to get, get into the queue right you are getting into a wait listed queue not even guaranteed that whether you will able to travel or not so why even block your money right so you you book today and you you pay it only on confirmation right and there were a lot of smart things that we did behind the scenes but this was a real customer pain point the day we launched it we see, saw a lot of jump in traffic a lot of adoption a lot of people actually talking about it that how this is a wonderful feature right so coming up with even like good interesting product offerings is actually very deeply understanding your customers right hope hope some of you guys actually identify with the trains use case i'm not sure how many of you travel via trains anymore but it's like a very very big problem right which is what i've highlighted in the second one to trying to book something but you are waitlisted you 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 get a ticket but you are not sure whether you will be able to travel or not and this is what i'm talking about like you book now and then pay on confirmation it actually gave us a very significant boost uh so this is why i just put in a representative sample point data skills right so i just want to show you like you guys might be thinking that you are good at data but just wanted to show you a sample review deck that we do every quarter with our business leaders this is just to show you a teaser of what is in store for you look look at the amount of data that you have on every slide and this is like 50 slides of only data 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 and more data this is so much to track so much to look at so many interesting trends playing out just crazy amount of data right and it starts with like business numbers then it starts sorry going back so i'll just sort of talk about a few things so let's ha huh. so it starts for example this one right starts with business numbers transactions uh, gross bookings revenue margin average transaction value right then it talks about how the traffic is trending how the order is trending what is mobile share of total traffic right because there's desktop also then how quarter on quarter the numbers are growing uh, how, uh transaction numbers revenue numbers uh then what is uh what is happening when you put uh, the tablet devices into account how much traffic is coming from tablet how much transactions then you are looking at everything by platform right so you have android you have uh, used to have two flavors of websites back then so you have different websites then you have iphone then you used to even have a windows app right so again look at everything by channel again right then compare it with desktop obviously you want to look at how your mobile uh, efficiency is doing vis a vis desktop right so you are comparing mobile conversion with desktop just like limitless right so this is why i said that like being good with data is super important and being able to derive insights out of data is like super super critical it's it's not a joke they like people think they because they are great with excel right uh, and they have done a b school course they are like uh, will kill it we are extremely good with data but in web world there is just so much crazy amount of data and you have to look at so many different things and make sure that the entire story is coming together it is not easy it's not easy to stay top on, on top of these things so again there is a very important skill the final thing like i said was market savvy right today if if the ceo of the company comes to you and asks you uh, that hey what do you think is the next business line uh, we should launch then you should have an answer right what is the right business uh, line to invest into uh, back then in 2014 15 the question we were asking ourselves was should we even launch mobile apps is this the right time or for example today if if the chief product officer of the company comes to you and asks you should we launch a vernacular version of our website app what should be your answer right so you should have a very good sense of what the market is where the market is today right otherwise you should have a good point of view on everything like today should we launch a, a, a hindi version of our app yes or no it's it's not an easy question to answer right so all these things are important so you need to know some of these things also and like i said the final big point is high agency right early on in your career it is more about execution than about strategy because building only, only when you launch high impact products is when you gain confidence and when you understand what is it that really works in the market it is great to theorize you can do 50 different powerpoint presentations 
but until unless you do a good job on your product and when it hits the market and actually become successful until then you don't realize what it takes to really build a good product so you need to be very disciplined with your execution you need to focus on even the first version of the product what all needs to be there in the version 1 of the product you need to write very detailed prds comparing every covering every single functional flow so i why I, i do have a link here so let me just try clicking on this uh, uh, okay we'll we'll probably skip this for now i'll show it later you have to work very closely with your design and engineering team you have to make sure that when the product is getting launched you are testing the functional use cases obviously you cannot test all the use cases all the edge cases but the functional use cases you have to test you have to make sure that every number that you need right for example you need to look at new product adoption you need to look at conversion you need to look at repeat you have to make sure that those numbers are actually flowing from your product to the uh, analytic system that you have right it your analytic system will not automatically generate the views that you want right you have to make sure that the users behavior is getting tracked accurately from your app from your website and the data is flowing from your from your product to the analytic system only then you will be able to look at conversion repeat new user percentage etc etc right so you have to be disciplined with that it's not just about launching the product right post launching the product you have to look at metrics what is working what is not working whether the thesis you had that okay this number should improve whether it improved or not if it did not improve why it did not improve you again have to look at further sub segments of that data to understand whether it worked did not work why it did not work and if you feel that there was uh, there is something that you can do to improve the numbers further then obviously you do that and you basically iterate right so this discipline is very important this is no longer about building powerpoint presentations you actually have to put a real product out there in the market and make sure that whatever <clears throat> numbers you are looking to hit you are actually hitting those numbers because ultimately all of that rolls up into the revenue of the company whatever you do directly impacts the revenue of the company right so uh, so on on paper it might look a great, like a great idea but i'm i can tell you that when it actually hits the real world things can change very quickly right so this is very very important like this is like the most important but if i had to like give you one take away from this presentation a uh, last bit uh, is more like bookkeeping uh, the way we run this is basically we do quarterly road maps we uh, we do things quarter to quarter uh, that is how we uh, do our work every quarter we look at what is it that we want to build why is it that we want to build it and how it is going to get built then once we have kind of finalized that we look at high level engineering estimates what is going to be the cost associated to building this and then accordingly we prioritize something we deprioritize something and then we break down then what happens is because it's a quarterly three month road map we break it down into monthly sort of chunks so what we call as sprints so month one what we are going to execute month two what we are going to execute month three what we are going to execute and execution the detailed execution this is what it looks like right so you have to write a PR, you have to make sure that you are writing a very detailed prd to get feedback from all the different stakeholders you might be thinking one thing in your mind but you get feedback from stakeholders you realize that this is not how this can be built or this is not the right version of what you want to build then you work with your design and your engineering team to basically get some early prototypes out then you get feedback on those designs right because a lot of people a lot of stakeholders will have a lot of feedback on designs it's not like you get the designs done from the designer and you throw it over and it's done right you have to get the designs done then get feedback from the stakeholders maybe from senior leadership on whether this is making sense not making sense once the designs are out your functional specs are out then you go to your engineering team and work out a very detailed monthly plan or three weekly plan as to how this is thing is going to get executed once it is in execution at every stage milestone stage you have to test your product yourself this is what we call as dog fooding if you are not testing your product how are you going to be sure that once it hits the market the actual user will be able to use it right so you have to be very religious about testing your own product right eating your own uh, sh shit is very very important right then you know what are the pain points right otherwise you don't know you might be missing a lot of cases that you would not have even thought of at your design stage or at your prd stage right and then eventually making sure that all your product metrics are instrumented so that you are able to look at what is working all your numbers are there so that you are able to look at what is working what is not working right so which means you also have to be handy with a few tools right for example you need to know web analytics otherwise how will you pull out numbers right because like google analytics you need to know how google and how to pull out data from google analytics or you need to know how to pull out data from mixpanel right because that is where the data is flowing right and that is where all the insights are right so some of those things are important
so i guess this is it uh, thank you guys for uh, being very patient listeners uh, i kind of breeze through the product philosophy part of it but happy to take any questions there as well anurag i think we can uh, uh, open the floor for questions and answers in case there are there are any yeah Uh, Any questions uh, on the product philosophy execution? Um, I don't have any question, but um, I want to like you know I was very impressed with the, the flow and you know, it was very engaging. I just want to ask this like you know what went behind this right? Who created this and it was very engaging. <laughs> I think you have to give credit to Isha and Nishani. I think uh, they put together the entire structure. So. Maybe Isha, this is now time to say a vote of thanks to all these people who are actually appreciating the session. Thank you, Anurag. Thank you so much. The board being Anurag's, in fact, and we do have a feedback form, so we want <laughs> your feedback there. <laughs> But uh, we are really glad that you liked the session, and definitely Anurag helped us uh, drive through the complete conversation and set up the complete flow. So this is what we wanted. We wanted you to have a glimpse of. Uh, what product management is here at OMMT, and uh, we are really happy that we were able to do justice of these three hours that we have uh, devoted. Thank you. Any question, Lakshmi? I think you had a question. Oh uh, yeah, so Anurag, so when we were discussing about the flow of the website, uh, a lot of jargons were being thrown around. So me, as a uh, non with a non CS background, was not really able to understand a lot of that things, right? So how do we uh, cope up with that? good great question lakshya very practical question uh, so i'll i'll tell you how to do it right so see every individual has some strengths and weaknesses right uh, for example you might be great at data you might have a great uh, eye of for design but you might not be great at text stuff it's fine right no one is a 10 on 10 on every skill out there right so what do you, what to do, do is you over index on so the skills that you are very good at right and you take help from the the organization itself feels like a family right so you get help from uh, your peers like i used to take help even from my peers right so take help from your peers like don't be shameless like whatever things you don't know ask questions be shameless take help from peers take help from juniors take help from your seniors and whatever things you do great just continue to uh, like do great on them and continue to improve that right so ultimately it's not the expectation that coming in you would know everything right but the expectation is like slowly you will ramp up on some of these things and you will become more smoother in your execution right ultimately it will help your life you can take a stand and say that okay i'll continue to only focus only on business thinking business sharpness and design but ultimately you your execution will get stalled because you will not understand everything right so Yes, initially there will be a bit of a learning curve. There might be a little bit of struggle also, but six months, eight months, ten months down the line, it will become much smoother. And ultimately, the thing is, you don't have to code, right? You have to only understand structurally how something works, right? So ultimately, just to give you some confidence, there are probably only twenty jargons or twenty-five jargons that you need to know, and that you would pick up uh, six months. Eight months, ten months is a long time frame to pick up like thirty different concepts, right? These are just concepts. right it's not like you have to go and actively code right so as long as you are able to have a conversation with your engineer i think it's fine uh thank you sure anything else yeah uh, a really small question from the last uh, you know uh, last slide yeah. so as a product manager uh, if i'm in charge of developing a product and launching it in a market making a timeline and doing all that so when you showed us the entire make my trip you know uh, the flight uh, booking the flight we saw that there are a lot of aggregators as well and there are a lot of financials involved and so as as a product manager am i also the in charge of you know understanding how to op- optimize uh, through the aggregators or is my job just regarding the designing of the product and the time limit of the product right. so uh, so richa again great question see what happens is uh uh you you because every business line is fairly complicated right so what happens is there is not one single pm who is looking after everything end to end right so there will be one product manager who is probably thinking about uh the mobile app flows right or the consumer side facing flows there will be one product manager who is exclusively focusing on the web flows right so maybe the uh, just making it up uh, maybe that's not really the case uh, right now today in slide stream But there might be some product manager who is looking exclusively at 
uh, the desktop and mobile web flows, right? For flights, there might be some product manager who will be looking at the supply side. So we'll be looking at whether the uh, integrations with AMDS is working properly. Well, like tomorrow, if we want to do two GDSs, right? Maybe travel port is giving better fares, right? So you want to kind of do like a supply strategy which integrates with those two, right? So another PM would be looking exclusively at those. One PM would be looking at, let's say, customer feedback. So you'd be looking at NPS ratings. You'd be looking at what kind of customer reviews are coming in on Play Store and App Store, right? So every individual will have certain part of the entire responsibility. It is impossible for one guy to look look at everything from end to end, right? So depending on which pod you will end up in, right? So even so, even if you get aligned with uh, flights, it is not necessary that you might be looking at the supply side. You might be looking at the app side. You might be looking at the website side. You might be looking at something else. You might be looking at flight recommendations, right? You might be looking at very specific things, right? So that is how we kind of structure the role and give uh, something uh, which like kind of aligns with the, uh, with the individual's interests. And also like we understand that not everyone can do like the full nine yards, right? That is just not possible. Like I cannot do it. <laughs> it's not possible even for me because this is so many things to look at. Does that help? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, uh, anything else? We have nine responses. Okay. One more to go. Great. Thank you so much, everyone, for your responses. Just one question. Like, this is not to Anurag, this is to HR. Could you give us some uh, idea about the word onboarding or anything as such on from that's uh, like some kind of pre reads before you join, like some kind of onboarding structure? Oh, no, I uh, yeah, sure, that is welcome. You can go, uh, you go give no, it no, to no, us. no, no, I, I sorry, I, I missed no, your no, no, sure, sure, no, no, it's okay. Uh, I just wanted to know when, like, uh, what is the timeline when we are joining or something like that. Uh, that is something that yeah, Isha would know. Yeah, yeah Shitranjan. So uh, again, I might not be the right person for this. Uh, so Anu, who is a part of campus hiring team, so she joined us, but she had a meeting at four o'clock, so she had to step out. But I'll surely convey your uh, maybe connect with you all on a mail and just give you some clarity on the onboarding and the next steps. I hope sure. that helps. Right? Sure. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, great connecting with you and we look forward to connecting with you. Uh, we just hope uh, uh, maybe face to face once you all join us at the office. Thank you guys. Pleasure. It was a pleasure to interact with all of you. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Cheers guys. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Bye.